What do you think of this new Jake Paul Mike Tyson? I kind of hate it, bro. Who do you think wins? If there even is a winner. Of course it's Jake. Like, I feel like his fights are just like, are predetermined All of fights. them? You think they're all rigged? I believe in God. Yeah. Everything is too perfect, bro. I know it's controversial, but I've been listening to a lot of Andrew Tate motivational oh videos. Oh my God. I don't know if this is the guy, dude. Ryan Garcia. What's going on with this kid? He freaked out. And I guess he took the invite, but immediately afterwards was so disturbed by what he saw. Welcome into the podcast, another episode of Living Large. Iggy Rodriguez, welcome back, my co-host. How you doing, bro? Having a pretty good week, man. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling a lot lighter this week. I don't know, maybe maybe it's us talking about stuff. Getting some stuff off your chest. But yeah, it feels good. I feel a little lighter this week. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys all for the comments on the last episode we did together. A lot of positive comments, a lot of negative comments, a lot of constructive criticism. We appreciate it all, and we'll go through some of those today. And as always, drop a like, and if you're listening on a podcast app, rate us freaking five stars so we can climb the charts. I went back to surprise my mom this week for her 70th birthday. The sweetest boy. Complete surprise. She had no idea. Complete surprise. The trip back was a little bit of a disaster. I'll get into that. But we had a group of about 50 people and she had no idea. 50? 5-0? Yeah, 50. Holy shit. She has that many friends? You have that many friends and family? That's awesome. Well, it's a big number. 70 people. That's true. Or 70 years old. Um, yeah, she thought she was just going out to eat with my immediate family, and then she walked in the country club of Hudson. It was Ooh, bougie. Wow, that sounds fancy. And all of us said surprise, and she almost cried, but That's she... Awesome. Did you get tears out? She was going to cry, oh, but man. she like tried to keep it together. Okay, all right. Because a lot of people she hadn't seen in a very long time were there. People do. People in my family that I'd never even seen before yeah, were there, right, right, and they were right. like, oh, this is your like cousin. Like a third uncle? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah. I don't even... Look. What's up, Rick? You remember me? <laughs> like, bro, I was five. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Really fun time. My trip there was a little bit of a disaster. So I had a 10 a.m. flight and I woke up at five to get a little work done before I went, packed. I get to the airport around eight. I check my bag. The second I check my bag and start walking to my gate, I get a text. Oh, no. Delayed one hour. Ugh. I was like, all right, whatever. It's just an hour. So I go to my gate. I'm sitting there. An hour goes by. Another text. No. Delayed one hour. No. So I was like, oh, my God. I go on the United app. Shout out United Airlines. And it says I could change my flight for free, no charge. And there was a direct flight, actually. So I was going to go LAX to San Francisco, San Francisco to Cleveland, because my buddy was in San Francisco, and he parked at the airport in Cleveland, so he was going to drive me back to my hometown, Hudson, Ohio. Okay. So that's we were just going to fly Well, together. the delay has screwed you up already, right? Well, his you got delayed, been... too, in oh, San wow. Fran. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So I texted him, like, hey, bro. I'm just going to take this direct flight. I don't want to be at the airport yeah, yeah, all yeah. day. Right, right. So I get on the direct flight and my cousins were actually on that flight. So I got to fly with my cousins, two cousins that live in Orange County. But anyways, I get to Cleveland. Uh, they take me back to a friend's house and my bag was on, no. my bag was on the LAX to San Fran flight. And I told my buddy, Hey, can you just grab my bag when you land? Cause he was sure. on San Fran to LAX. He lands, he waits for my bag. He's like, bro, it's not here. And I'm like, oh my God, what happened? So I go on the app. My bag is in Chicago. <laughs> it's not even, not nowhere near where you wanted it to be. Not even In either cool. location. What? Nowhere near in either location. Right? Yeah. So it lands in Chicago at one o'clock in the morning. Oh my God. And they're like, I call them. I'm like, this is what my friend told me to do. They're like, if you lose a bag, you need to call and you need to say, hey, I have medicine yeah in there, meds for sure and yeah, i have yeah. to take I'm gonna it die. i need it on the yeah. next flight out so i called and i was like hey my meds are in there like i really need it on the next flight out so it you know fly <laughs> <laughs> my boner pills are yeah. in there yeah. <laughs> it flew to chicago to cleveland i went and picked it up in the morning but that was my disaster uh of getting there did, but wait did the bag come back quickly did that work yeah was worked. that a thing it was on 6 a.m flight it landed no at like way. 8 a.m dude yeah. the stress of not having your stuff when you land so frustrating yeah. and only having one outfit. Oh my God. I mean, I just, but you're to, home though. At least yeah, you're yeah. home. You no, I wasn't like home though. I was at a friend's house cause I was surprised. But at my least mom. you're going home. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, but then I had to drive yeah. all the way to Cleveland, which is like a 40 That's minute a drive. Nightmare. Yeah. That's a Disaster. But, uh, this, this reminded me of something, you know, I, I find it so funny when people go on social media and complain about an airline. Yeah. They're like, never fly United. This happened to me. But if you really think about it, what flight are you supposed to take? Because there's always been someone online 
that's complained about never fly United. And then someone else sure. is like, never fly American. And then someone else is like, don't fly Spirit. They charge you to breathe. Well, obviously, but it's like, bro, Spirit. what flight are you supposed to take? It's all bullshit, dude. Right? You have like you're. I have seen so many people also bitch about like credit cards. You still got your American Express, pal. Yeah. And you're gonna use it forever. I don't understand why people take to social media to complain about airlines. The same reason people take to social media about anything. They just want to be seen or feel heard. You know what I mean? And I feel like I'm old enough where when Twitter really got going, if you complained on Twitter, I feel like you usually usually got like responses back in the day. Right, right. Like if you yelled loud enough, Mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure that stopped now, but like back in the day, if... I think I I think I lost a bag or like something happened on a flight and I DM this is like like post bachelor days mm-hmm. so I had like I don't know however many had thousands, a little clout a going tiny on. bit of clout <laughs> but they de- like the customer service DM me back almost immediately and was like I'm so sorry here's like a voucher for your next flight like yeah. it used to work yeah, yeah, yeah so I can see a little bit of that but mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it, I think there's so many people that bitch about everything now that it doesn't really matter anymore I thought about this on the flight because I had the Wi-Fi and I was you guys texted yeah, yeah, for yeah. Call of Duty yeah, yeah imagine the business opportunity. If there was video games on flights and you could log and play like Madden or... I would pay an... Un- I would pay the cost of the flight yes. to play Madden for six hours uninterrupted on like, a fucking flight. I know they have those like games, but they're so boring. What am I, a Sudoku? What yeah. am I, a little Korean boy? No, I want to play Madden. Dude, if you could plug a controller into the TV and play like oh Madden against someone in 36A, it's like... Oh, so not, not even like... Against your boys online. I mean, I feel like that'd be difficult. Another with the, the connection would be, kind of t- would be kind of tight, actually. Play NBA 2K, any two-player game, or you could even play COD, whatever that, that, game. That would be kind of sick. Bro, if you have a flight from LA to Dubai, a 20-hour flight, I'm playing video games the whole the time, time. I'm not going to bed. And it's just going to go by so quick. They have those, like, you've seen those, like, mini systems, like, where if you play, it's like a USB, you plug it in your TV, it's got, like, a bunch of SNES yeah. games. Yeah. Even that. Dude. Even that, I would pay... A hundred dollars for it. I think that's like the most insane business on a six idea. hour flight. Yeah, I would reason for a stack of SNES games and like N sixty four games. I would pay close to a hundred dollars for for a six hour flight. Yeah, yeah. I Madden think, easily. Or easily. just make it free. Make it free, so we can all enjoy it. Well, but yeah, I think that's a good business opportunity. But I want to give a shout out to my mom. Woo. Because I want to say happy birthday to you. I've never met your mom, but I want to wish her a happy birthday on the pod. Look at her. Happy She's bir- watching right Happy now. birthday, mom. You got a nice boy over here. He's done pretty good. Thanks, Iggy. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, it's because of her. And yeah. that's what I want to say. Like, my mom is, I think, the reason that it's so hard for me to find a woman, which is a good thing in a we bad We talked about this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because she, she set the bar so high of what my expectation is for a woman because I've seen what my mom's capable of. She taught for 36 years, second grade. I don't know how she did it. She had four kids. She had me when she was 39. Damn. She would wake up before us for, before school, make our lunches. She would, she would go to school while we were at school. She would come home. She would do the laundry. She would do the dishes. She would make us dinner, like at, clean the whole house like Jeez. every weekend. Absolute superhero. And never bitch about anything. At least I never heard it. Maybe she was bitching to my dad. Probably just bitching about my dad. Because he wasn't fucking doing all that shit. But just a superhero of a woman. And so loving and caring. And something that she's done, man. Like, through this breakup. And it's, I think it's important, you know, when you go through a breakup. To have family and friends around that you care about. My mom has sent me a card once a week. Oh my goodness, mom. You're making it really hard for us to find right? women who meet that standard. Since the breakup, I've gotten a card a week That's from awesome. my mom telling me what how a she's good lady. proud of me, how much she loves me, and no one writes cards anymore. And, it's crazy and that's to, why, hold on, I got my mom's, that's what she signs the cards with, love. That's mom. awesome. Is and that her I, handwriting? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. It's like, number one, big time shout out mom, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I come from a Spanish household where like, the female in the household is like the rock of the home. Mm-hmm. Like they're responsible for making sure that things like run in the family. The guy is supposed to traditionally, right? Traditionally yeah, speaking, yeah. the guy makes the bread, the guy goes to work, but the mom like is the heartbeat of the house. Mm-hmm. It's crazy to think that like, how old your mom? She just turned 70, 70 right? Yeah. You're still like her little guy. Mm-hmm. Like she still cares that much. I don't care about anything that much. Mm-hmm. The idea that like 
she still takes the time to write a card like that that that's fucking love dude yeah like to see that firsthand and then to see what we're working with out in the world like yeah. i can i can understand why it there's there's a huge gap between like reality and expectation. Well, there's been a huge generational shift. Totally. Like, totally. They don't, it, love doesn't come. They don't like build them used, like that anymore. It, literally. It yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. come like it used to come. And it's like, to be honest, like I know that you get a lot of, I really like the traditional values. I like the, I would love to a degree because I really want my partner to have a dream and aspirations and follow that dream but then again i also want to provide for them but i want them to have their own life but i think i mean my mom had a job and you yeah. know she did that she did what she loved to do and still you know made things work i don't i don't necessarily want a stay at home mom do you but i, I do like I those think, values i think you and i are like right at the cutoff mm -hmm. like I also really like traditional values. Like I actually like, I'm happier knowing that I can provide like in my past relationship, I think I delivered a ton of value, not just cause I could buy stuff, but like taking care of a person, mm -hmm. it feels like a masculine trait. It makes me feel like a man to be able to provide yeah. for the person that I care about. I have no idea what like a 25 year old thinks of this. Yeah. Like, I feel like we're at the cutoff where like we saw our parents have that traditional like value system in our relationship. And so that was kind of instilled upon us, but we grew up in a more contemporary environment. So I wonder what it's like for like a 20 year old kid. Like, yeah. do they give a shit? Like what, 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 I wonder what a 20, a 20 year old's perspective is on that relationship dynamic. I want to, they've seen only the contemporary stuff. Yeah. I want to build together. But I think once I form a family, have kids and stuff, then I would want to be like, hey, all right, I'll take the lead here. But with... be able to provide a life so yeah, that yeah. they can focus on the yeah, family. But stuff. I want to build together totally to begin with. And then once we have a family, have that stability. I don't know. I think times are different now, too, where it's like mm -hmm. back in the day, my, my grandparents age, my parents, they could live off of one wage. In today's sure. generation, dude, I saw something in, in Los Angeles. If you make $150,000 a year in Los Angeles, you're considered lower middle lower class. Lower middle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You need two jobs in today's day and age with most people, you know, LA. To live a life that you would like to live. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like times are so much different. That's, that's, that's a crazy number. And my mom, when she had her, uh, I don't know, she, she was reading the paper or something on this day when she was born, how much stuff cost, how much rent was, how much gasoline was. And like, Darren was like a nickel. Yeah. yeah. And like, people are like, like older folks are like, you know, back in, when I was your age, yeah. I had this, 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 and this. Well, dude, you can't get like. An egg is $12. Yeah. Like Whole when Foods you, when you used shit. to leave the house, I saw a guy talk about this online. He's like, I used to ask for five, 10 bucks, 20 bucks max. My kid comes up to me and asks me for 50 bucks to leave the house. Yeah. It's, it's just to lit. exit the home. It's the new $5. That's crazy. I mean, in LA. How much? In LA for sure. Well, as I was like entering being like single again, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen it too. I think the average date night, like first date night, dinner, drinks, well, like you go the hard. average. Well, no, I go hard. Sure. But like this was like an Instagram thing. It wasn't just yeah. like Iggy's bank account. I think the average was about three hundred dollars in LA. It was like two seventy or two sixty. You want to talk about that date you went on with my ex girlfriend's friend? <laughs> I, well, I thought it went. The date went fine. Yeah, I, no, so, it didn't. but but it was the no. end. The end. Yeah. It was the end. So I thought the date went fine, and I, she, she, I, if she listens, I thought she was cool. Yeah. Um, and we chatted a little bit. Nothing really came of it, but I thought it was a it was a fine like first date kind of like back into the world. I didn't get robbed. So <laughs> yeah. fucking massive plus for this lady. Big W. Um, I was playing Call of Duty with you. Mm -hmm. And I always assume that a girl is going to run late. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, we're going to run one more because of course we're going to run one more. <laughs> Knowing that I had to get gas. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to run one more and I'm going to have time to go get some gas before I go to the restaurant and everything's going to be fine. I told her 15 minutes earlier 
because I'm used to doing oh, that with you, girls. You had like an eight o'clock reservation. Exactly. You it was for 8.15. Yeah, yeah. But I told her eight. And so she hits me up at like 7.55. And she's like, hey, I'm going to be there right on time. I'll see you soon. Me having full expectation that I've got like 30 minutes yeah, yeah, before yeah. I have to go. So I rush upstairs. I like, throw my jacket on. I fucking, I finish the game, to be <laughs> fair. To be fair, I did finish the game. But I'm one of those guys that like, for whatever reason, I have like a weird... I don't like putting gas in my car. It's like such an inconvenience to me. Yeah. And so it is, it's low. It's on E. It's on E, but I'm like, everything we're doing is within like a couple mile radius. It doesn't really matter. So whatever we go, we have drinks, date is fine. I end up driving her back and I'm actually feeling pretty good about the date. Like the conversation was fine. I'm like, this is, this is a perfectly fine first date. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're talking and like, we're kind of talking about like work stuff and she's, she's not from LA. So we're talking about like travel and like, we're like, we're not making plans, but like, we're talking about things that are expensive to do that we would like to do. And I'm in my relatively nice car and all of a sudden we're maybe (laughs) half a mile away from her place. And all of a sudden my car goes and like the lights kind of flicker on. And I absolutely run out of gas on the way to drive this lady back, have to pull over. Maybe one of the most embarrassing first date yeah. endings of my entire life. I had to like play it off. And it's so funny. I, I remember immediately like sweating. <laughs> like I got so embarrassed. Like I immediately started sweating. Mm-hmm. I called an Uber and I had the Uber get us from my broken down car and drop her off. So needless to say, any like, positive romantic energy that was happening was completely shit on as yeah. a result but it was fun. now i if i have to get gas i'll i'll get gas now i fill her yeah. up these days expensive yeah. night for you too you took her to catch steak catch steak that's how right. much was the bill 500 wasn't it or something like that no the all in it was like it was more drinks than food even like but yeah. the, like what's crazy is that like it was a reasonable amount of food like it wasn't crazy Mm-hmm. but it's a first date. You have a couple of drinks, right? Like that's yeah. pretty natural. It was close to $400 just to like, because every drink was, I think, I think their espresso martini is 30 bucks. Yeah. It's $30 for, a, for an espresso martini. For a shot of coffee. It's and vodka. coffee, Kahlua and tequila and a bean yeah. <laughs> like for $30. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, get gas or leave earlier or whatever and is the moral of the story. Don't play call of duty with your friends before a first date. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, entertain that one play with your friends yeah just yeah. don't play the one extra well i get in a lot of comments and dms from people okay how do you get over a breakup <sighs> my girl left me how do you do it man and i'm going through it right now do you have advice of course i have advice okay and you know who's helped me who robin i, I know it's controversial but I've been listening to a lot of Andrew Tate motivational oh videos. Oh my God. I don't know if this is the guy, dude. Dude. But he is. Okay. Tell I know me why. he says controversial yeah. shit. But if you really want to get into this mentality of like, here's my thing acceptance is first, right? Accept the fact that she does not want you. It is reality. She left you. Accept that. Which is. Hard to do. It's hard to do. Especially if you're hurt. Right? Yes. Hard to do. Number two, I say accountability. Clearly, she didn't want you for a reason. So reflect on the relationship and take accountability for the shit that you need to improve on. And that's the only thing you can do. You can't sit here and blame like, well, this they did this, they did this, they did this. They did. No, no, no. It's your fault. Like, it's not all your fault, obviously, but take accountability and accept the things that you need to work on. And work on those things so that the next girl, if there ever is one, (laughs) doesn't find those same flaws in you that the last one didn't want, you know? And then number three is level the fuck up. That's what I'm working on right now. Level yourself up. Something that's helped me. It might sound weird. Buy some new clothes. Make yourself. You got money now. You don't got to go on dates. You at least have a couple extra hundred dollars. Yeah. You don't got to go on dates. Invest in yourself. Buy some new clothes. Make yourself feel good. Buy a new cologne. Make yourself smell good. Level up on your hygiene. Level up on your mental health. Read some books. Talk about the situation with people you trust. Level up on your physical health. It's crazy how you can feel so 
bad. And then you go to the gym and you feel really, really good. It's insane. And I think the most important thing is self-discipline. Because if you can't trust yourself, how can other people trust you? And how can other people take you serious if you don't take yourself serious? So I say take little wins every single day. Check off a list. For me, the the little wins are this. I say I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. My alarm goes off. I get up at 5 a.m. Boom. I did what I said I was going to do. I say I'm going to make my bed first thing. I make my bed. I did it. I make my coffee. I edit my podcast. I go do my fasted cardio. I go to the gym. I'm checking off these things that I told myself the night before that I'm going to do. And I have to hold myself accountable. So you're going to start to build a little bit more confidence in yourself. And that's what I talk about with level up. I think you need to level up to the point where you get yourself in a position where you look back on the relationship and you say, why was I even in that? And that's kind of what I did in my last breakup. And that's why I stayed single for so long because I was in such a confident headspace where not to be a dick, but I felt like no girl was good enough for me for a very long time. And that's what I'm trying to get back at. And I'm, I, I think I'm on my way. A, a lot of that stuff I agree with. If, if we're talking to the, to the peoples at home, like in theory, waking up at 5 a.m., 100%, like get, get up earlier, go do the thing. Those are hard things to do. Mm-hmm. And so when people ask me for advice, they're like, how do you? So I got an ice plunge at home yeah. now. I get in it at 7 a.m. for the last, I'm now going on like 8 <clears throat> Eight, like I, Monday through Friday, I'm in my ice bath by 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. It fucking hurts. Yeah. Like it's it's not one of those like, oh, that was difficult. Like it hurts at 7 a.m. How do you tell yourself to actually get up and do the thing? Because like we can write them all. People can write them down, right? Like I want to get better. I want to go to the gym. But when that alarm hits and it's fucking 5 a.m. and it's like you're cozy, 99.9% of people are going to hit snooze yeah. and bail on it. Like, how do you motivate yourself to get out of bed? Yeah. Are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I, I agree with all that stuff. But, like, where I have a problem communicating how to... I don't know how to tell people to want to do it. You know what I'm saying? You... you I mean, I don't know. I, I guess my mindset is, okay, my ex-girlfriend did not want this... Ver- the version of me that didn't get out of bed. Got it. Got it. So I need to become a better version for the next person. I need to make myself more attractive. I need to, because I've talked about it before. I was at a low when I got into a relationship, which I don't recommend ever doing. I was in a very dark place and I felt good being loved by someone when I didn't love myself and it catches up with you. And that's what I say, take accountability. Like I, I'm not the perfect boyfriend. I'm a good guy, but there are a lot of things that I need to work on. And I, I, I would always tell her too. I'm like, I wish you would have met the version of me uh, before this. And it sucks that it, I didn't get back to that point while in the relationship. And that's on me. That's my fault. Yeah, you know? but it, it's, it's so hard to keep doing the work when you're in a relationship. It is. Because they're like a safety blanket. It is. It's yeah. like, oh, I don't have to do the scary hard stuff anymore yeah. because now I have someone that like, gives me that love and energy and attention. Yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, like I said, I, I fucked up a lot. I I didn't work on myself to the degree I should have worked on myself. I'm doing that now. Granted, I have a lot more time. And you get comfortable. You sit there and tell yourself, well, they love this version of me that I fucking hate. Yeah. So I don't have to get better. But you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. That's what I'm focused <clears throat> on right now. So so that that's that's your tool. It's like, I want to be a better version of myself. So I'm willing to wake up at five. Yeah. Like I'm not, I, I'm, I'm willing to not hit snooze because I know that I want to be a better version of myself because the last one, that last version either didn't sit well with you yeah. or it ended up being not the person you wanted to be. I didn't like myself. So I, yeah. why the fuck would I expect her to like me? Yeah, that's a good point. And she did, you know? Right, right. Which made it easy not to level up and do the work. Correct. Yeah. But... The motivation's there right now. And I think also, guys, focus on something that makes you happy. The podcast, I'm, I'm really enjoying it and we're hanging this out is, a lot. I've always wanted... Yeah. I, I texted you the other day, like, out of nowhere, like, this is fun, dude. Uh, I'm trying to figure out my YouTube still, as I have been, because it's just not the same yeah. that it used to be. But also, that's my fault, too. Like I said, I'm taking accountability. Everything is my fault. 
and I'm in the position I am right now because of myself, nobody else. And I've gotten myself out of this position before and I know that I can do it again. And I'm not fucking giving up despite people saying shit in the comments, despite the views. I don't care. They still watched. I'm fucking they still left the comment. Yeah, I'm I'm not giving up. I will never give up on myself and you should never give up on yourself either. I think that's the most important thing. That got me fired up a little bit, dude. dude. Let's fucking go. Um, so I, I had an incident. Um, I'm getting a little cocky lately. <laughs> me? I have to. No, oh, you. To myself, yeah, yeah, yeah. not yeah, to other yeah. people. No, that's good. Yeah, but like yeah, to but, myself. But you're supposed to be to yourself. Yeah. Or else not how the cocky, fuck are you gonna confident. get anything done? I gotta get my confidence up. <clears throat> so we talk about like motivating factors. I had a little bit of a motivating factor about a week and a half ago. I found myself in the emergency room at 11 p.m. out of nowhere. What the hell? I'm not one to like cry about physical injuries. I like, maybe I get it from my dad. My dad like hates the doctors. Like Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, if I, if I'm going to the emergency room, something has to be going on. It's Monday night. I'm having my regular Monday night routines. I usually like put my laundry away, just like doing stuff to get the week in a good place. Mm -hmm. I start having these like weird chest pains. I've like hurt myself a number of different times where I'm like, oh, maybe I just pulled something. It kind of feels like like, when I take a breath, I get this kind of pain in my chest. Maybe I just pulled something. I'm getting old. It's fine. (laughs) It gets progressively worse over the next like 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm starting to get a little uncomfortable. It's kind of freaking me out a little bit, but I'm going to lie down. I'm going to sleep it off. I'm sure I'll be fine in the morning. When I lie down within a matter of a couple seconds, there is excruciating pain going up my neck, like in the base of my head, down my shoulder, into my chest, and behind like where my shoulder blade is. Just this pulsing, awful pain every time I take a breath. And I'm like, nah, this is this isn't like I pulled a rib or it's like this is this is fucked up. <laughs> pulled a rib. I don't know if you can pull a rib. But like but they got floating ribs in there, you can fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And so I go to the emergency room. Number one, if you have been to the emergency room at night, it is, it is, it's fucking Hades. Like Hades? Hades. Yes. What does H- that mean? Hades is like the underworld oh. in Greek mythology. <laughs> it is like, there's drug addicts. Yeah. There's like gunshot victims. People are throwing up. I walked in and there was a guy just throwing up on a blanket. Blood or just? Just barf. Oh, on a blanket. Fucked up. Cedar sinai which is like a really nice hospital in, in Hollywood. Okay. And number one, I'm like, now I'm, fr- I'm freaked out about me. And now I'm freaked out to be in this environment. Like, this is fucking, this is, this is literally hell. And they run some scans and they're like, yeah, we're showing some irregularities with your heart. But you're not dying right now. So we've got people who are. And. <laughs> I don't know why it, I laughed. Sorry. It's good. It's <laughs> Just it's like, it's like, like the craziness of, like, yeah, of that yeah, response. Yeah. They're like, you're not dying right now. Literally. Yeah. So your wait time is about six to seven hours. Oh, fuck. I'm like, are you fucking serious? And they're like, yeah, you just got to go. So I'm like curled over in pain. I'm like, if I'm going to be in pain, I'm at least going to go home. Mm-hmm. So I go up and I'm like, hey, can I leave? And they're like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You shouldn't, but we, yeah. don't, we really don't care all that much. Go home. Gets a little better. I end up going to the doctor, like my regular doctor the next day. Run an EKG. They run some more tests. And they're like, look, again, you're not dying right now, but our scans are showing that either you are having or you had a heart attack. What? And I'm like, the shit that runs through your mind. Yeah. I'm 37. I work out five days a week. I eat relatively well. Like, I I don't have, like, a history in my life. Like, I'm panicking. Like, I should be... I, I feel okay. Like, this... It was one of those, like, this can't be happening to me. It's kind of like, not right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this can't be happening to me right now. I am going back in the emergency room. We get blood work done. I have about the wait, by the way, again, at like 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, six hours. That's ridiculous. Emergency room. That means right now. Yeah, no, it means when we get to it. Yeah. And I end up going in. They have to do blood work now because they're worried about stuff. So they do all these tests. And I finally, finally get in six hours later. They do the blood work. And the lady, the doctor, she says, look, Good news is it's not a heart attack. But for six hours of my life, I'm like, if I have to have surgery or something, like, who's going to take care of my dog? Me. Yeah, he likes it. <laughs> like, who's going to take care of my dog? Like, I don't, like, 
I, I, told, I was like, what about my health and shit? Like, what, like, literally, what would happen if I, like, died right now? Like, that shit. Why do you, I don't know why you're laughing about my demise over here. Because you're still alive. Well, I'm fine. Yeah. But it, so, like, we talk about, like, motivating factors. By the way, I got a virus called pericarditis. Okay. Which can, anybody can catch it. Our buddy Phil has it. Oh, really? He, he caught it, like, a couple, like, maybe a couple years ago. Now he has oh. to get his, like, heart checked every six months just oh, to make wow. sure it's fine. But you could, any, any healthy person can catch it. So short version is it ended up being something with my heart that looks like a heart attack when you do an EKG, but you run the blood work and it's just a virus. You take meds. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get it. It's just really scary because it looks and it feels like a heart attack. Yeah. But ever since that moment, I've been like health conscious. Am I eating too much red meat? Mm. Like, should I maybe like, you know what? I'm going to do an extra 10 minutes of cardio because I usually don't. I'm going to make sure I get to sleep. No, nah, I'm not going to. I don't think I'm going to have that glass of red wine with went to dinner last night. And yeah. I didn't drink it. And I'm like, I don't know if yeah. I want to like, I don't need that two glasses of red wine. So my motivating factor right now is that for about six hours, I thought I was having a heart attack mm -hmm. and I'm just panicked about the mortality of me all of a sudden. It's fucking weird, dude. It's you need a wake up call in some degree to get you going for some Something. reason. Relationship, yeah. physical. Yeah. Like a death in the family. You never think like, about your health until you're potentially not okay. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. I wonder why that is that we, we, those things make us motivated. It's fucking scary, man. It's scary, yeah. dude. Are you afraid to die? <clears throat> it's so funny. I was thinking about that a little bit be like because of this. No. No, like, no way, dude. Like, I feel too good. Like, I feel too, and not just, like, physically. Like, I'm too hopeful. Yeah. Like, there's just stuff that I want to do. There's, like, I think there's more for me to do in my life than for it to just be done right now. I said, are you scared to die? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, you are? E e I mean, like, scared to, ready. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't say it ready is, to die. I yeah, just said scared It, it is to. a scary concept. Why? It's guaranteed. Of course it's guaranteed. It doesn't mean like, doesn't mean I have to be okay with it. It's scary, dude. The idea of just like no longer existing. But you, does scare but me, you don't right? exist anymore. Do you believe in God? Oh, we're going to go down this road. <laughs> this is actually an interesting transition because I've been getting really deep into these like conspiracy theory, TikTok wormholes. So we'll, we'll talk about this a little okay. bit. <laughs> I mean, I've been, uh, so I've been posting a lot about it. Something that my dad wanted me to do. By the way, not, not to cut you off. You posted your, uh, like a Bible verse the other day. Yeah. I didn't even know that was something you were like actively like practicing. Yeah. So someone texted or DM me. They're like, Hey, where are you going to open up about your refining your faith? And that is the perfect word for it. Refinding. So I was raised in a Catholic household, went to church every single Sunday, um, did confession once a month. I didn't like it. It was very <laughs> awkward talking to a priest through I cheated a... on my third grade test. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I got baptized, obviously. I got, went to confirmation, first communion. Um, I did this thing called teen life in high school. I would go to church every Sunday and do these classes and whatnot and these Bible studies. And then I went to college and didn't go to church. Because I was in college and right. you just party in college. And you drink Bud Lights and yeah. hang out. Lost my faith, moved to Los Angeles. The most faithless yeah. town in America? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Got sucked into the life. And yeah, I, I've been talking. It's interesting. So my grandma, she passed away when I was, I think, 16. And that was the first death in my family. And we were, we were there. We took her off life support. It was Damn. a tough Tough thing to see as a, as a kid, yeah. 14 or 16. I think I was 14, actually. She dead broke. Died with no money in her bank account. But my grandma was the happiest person on earth. Yeah. And she said the rosary every single day. Did, never missed a day. Mm -hmm. When she would come to my baseball game, she would... This is how broke she was. She would sneak me a dollar yeah don't tell your mom that's that, that's big money for grandma yeah. yeah she was broke but she was the happiest person ever she every everything she had she gave it to her family and you know my dad talked about it after the death and as i got older that you know the faith that she had and the belief in an afterlife is is what kept her going like 
kept her so happy. My dad was raised and he went to Catholic school and my dad's, my dad's a Eucharistic minister. Do you know what that is? He like, I, no, he like at church is like the blood of Christ or Got the it. body of Christ. He does the crisps. That. Yeah. yeah. He does the, like, the he Jesus plans crisp. the fish fries on Friday. He Damn. is like lives and breathes. I, I had no, I, I personally, this is the first time I'm hearing yeah. that your family was this religious lives and breathes church yeah. and the Bible. And he's been frustrated with me because yeah, for 10 years I, I had questions that I didn't, my, the answers weren't lining up with the logic, I guess, that I was... In what way? What do you mean? Just, I had questions of like, okay, I was raised Catholic, but say you were raised Buddhist. I like to believe that my dad told me the right way, but you also like to believe that your dad told sure. you the right way. So I was like, why are, who's right? You know, you're telling me that Jesus, and you're saying that it's Buddhist, and I don't know anything about that religion, but... Why is my dad right and my his the teachings he's telling me right and why is his dad wrong? You know what I mean? It, it just didn't add up to me and I never really got the right answer. Like I didn't get the answer I wanted to hear, so I just kind of lost my faith. And where was I going with this? What was I talking yeah. about before? R oh, you were asking the again. questions, yeah, and yeah. finding my faith again. And yeah, so my dad got frustrated with me. I, I stepped away from it for a while, and he asked me. And every time, dad, I'm looking right at you. Every time I would call my dad with a problem, no matter what the problem is, it would always lead back to religion. And I would get so frustrated because he was like, not helping me with the problem. But now that I'm reading the Bible and, and reading certain stories, I'm realizing that you can learn a lot from it. And having faith is an important thing thing because i would ask him about like whatever my breakup he's like you gotta read the bible you gotta, you gotta and i posted a thing i'm like there's a thing in there about forgiveness and and stuff like that and i'm, I'm not i'm just started reading the bible by the way i'm not very educated on this stuff i'm still trying to learn and the, the wording is very yeah old times you know yeah. so it's hard to really understand but yeah anyways i guess you know part of the reason i'm reading it is because my dad's always been such a positive, happy, loving, caring, will do anything for any one person. My grandma died broke and was the happiest person on earth. So they're doing something that's making him this way and their belief in God and their, their faith and dedicating their life to something greater and believing that there is something greater, I think allows them the opportunity to appreciate what they have more. Sure. And I think I got sucked into, I mean, you guys see LA, look at like Doja Cat and Lil Nas X. Yeah. And it's all Satan, Satan, Satan. Ryan Garcia. And the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's, and I noticed this too, and I thought this was interesting. I posted a, a podcast clip on TikTok and it was my friend, Nate Buzz. He's an actor in the Vampire Diaries. And he was talking about the Bible and God and Jesus. And I was writing out the caption and I went to put an emoji and I typed in Bible. There's no Bible emoji. I, I deleted it. I typed in Jesus. There's no Jesus mm. emoji. I deleted it. I typed in God. There's no God emoji. I typed in devil. There's four devil emojis. Wow, that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Okay. Even Apple. Yeah, it's weird. Apple has four devil emojis, but not a single cross god there's an angel i think there's an angel yeah but four to one it doesn't really, it doesn't really work out yeah are it's crazy you, are you finding it difficult to find that faith again or, or do you like are you, do you feel like you're kind of like forcing yourself to work through it or do you feel like it's kind of coming naturally i'm reading the bible i i initially started reading the bible for my dad okay but I, I know through time, ooh, <clears throat> what the hell was that? I know through time that I'll start to enjoy it. I read other books for other people, and sure. then I, after I read them, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm sure, really sure, glad sure, that sure. I read that book. Um, oh, shit, I wanted to say something. What was your question again? Am I reading it for my dad? Well, no, are you finding it difficult to, to like regain this faith that you lost? 
Just I've never you, not believed in God. I, I believe in God. Yeah. Everything is too perfect, bro. Yeah, it's weird. Like you're telling me that yeah, two worlds just collided and then ev- all of this was formed and all like this human life and all these animals and stuff. It just like from a big bang. Right. Doesn't make sense. Something had to have, someone had to have created this. I agree completely. I grew up religious. I grew up Catholic. Mm-hmm. And I, I think one of the reasons that I also have a bit of a hard time with a specific religion is exactly what you were wondering about when you were younger. Yeah. Like people have holy wars about their Religious opinions wars. about yeah. religions and, and whose God is the right. Like it just seems, it just feels like they're missing the point. I think, right. I, I think the point is to be able to have faith, right. Mm-hmm. And to have a belief system and to be able to lean back on that belief system during difficult times. And when you make difficult decisions, right. Like just being a decent human being is like, yeah the tenant of, of most religions. Right. And my, the weird thing about me right now, for whatever reason is my TikTok is flooded with con- every, like it, if we started talking about the pyramids right now, I'd lose my shit. Like I am, <laughs> in, I am you're... a strong believer that there was an entity that came down to earth and manipulated our genetics to become like a, what we believe are like aliens you're saying call them aliens yeah they're like they were beings before we from go on to this planet. topic though before we <laughs> if, go on if to, we don't even have to go on this topic be, before we transition here i do want to say like about the religion and faith yeah like that's a big part of the reason i think that i'm so giving and caring because i was brought up that way and it is faith right and morals and values and that's what we're talking about in our class yeah the ten commandments bro like I'm never going to cheat. That's no, no one should commit adultery. Right. I'm never going to steal. I'm never going to kill someone. I'm never, I've never been in a fight, bro. I've, I've never even yelled at someone. Yeah. And I think that is all ingrained in those morals and values and that faith. Well, I think that's what religion should be used for. Yeah. That's what faith should be used for. Not to wage war against people. Oh yeah. Insane. But I don't, I don't knock anyone if they believe whatever they want to believe. Well, that's the point. Yeah. Yeah believe what you want to believe but again the intention is to use that as like a moral compass yeah it's also hypocritical if you push your beliefs on someone yeah Yeah. and like oh you don't believe what i like you're wrong like this that like dude yeah it doesn't you don't need to convince someone that you're right they have to just find out what it reminds me of that one date i went on with that chick which one you know who i'm talking about which date Refresh my memory. So I was, this was a while ago. We, we went. Oh, wait. Yeah, you're right. I do remember this. Bro, we go on a date and somehow the topic of homelessness in Los Angeles comes up. (laughs) She goes, how would you solve homelessness in LA? That is such a fucking absurd date question. I go, I don't know. I'm a no one knows because there's a billion homeless people around or she got mad at me because I wasn't using my platform or something like that to like help solve the issue and move it forward. Yeah, I go, I'm a YouTuber. I make videos to make people laugh and hopefully they can learn something from me. And that's my job to entertain and be funny and whatever. Give some wisdom that I know. It's not my job to solve the world's issues. Sure. If you wanted to, you'd pick a different job. yeah. Yeah. I go, you're asking me. To, to solve homelessness <laughs> when our own government hasn't figured it out. Right. That is their job. Correct. To protect the people. Right. And they don't even know what the fuck's going on. Did she have an answer? No, we got in a huge argument. I don't even remember. Like, this is so long ago, but I, awesome. we never talked again. Wait, you had such an argument about home, about you not, she was so mad at you that you couldn't solve homelessness. And I wasn't using my platform to like <laughs> fix it. I don't know. Well, did she have an answer? Was she like, here's how you solve it? You're, I you're dumb. This is it. I can't remember. But even people that do those videos where they're like, give back to the homeless, they get clapped online anyway. It's like, oh, you're exploiting the homeless. Hate, I hate those people. Dude. But let's talk about the government. Did you see what just happened? With what? They're, the house passed the ban of TikTok. I did see that. I did see that. Well, it passed the house, right? Yeah. So it has to pass the Senate. Yeah. So there's a couple other steps. But, and I only read the headline, 
but it was they're banning it unless they sell, sell it the to company America. to an American owned entity. Think about this. All the shit that's going on in the United States of America. We this is what we're talking tons about. Tons of illegals flooding in here. We have I could walk outside right now in Los Angeles and there's probably people frozen like this cuz they're on fentanyl. We have so many issues going on and we're focused on banning TikTok when cuz it's made in China, right? When the phone we use is made in China. Yeah, but it's American owned. They make the chips in China. I get it. The chip in your car, made in China. Probably the shirt I'm wearing, made in China. Definitely made in China. But TikTok, got to get rid of this shit, bro. Our own government spies on us. I mean, they they, <laughs> they just, but the, the government wants to own, it, if it gets big enough, they have to own it. They're like mad that, I don't know the, the details behind it, but it's just like so crazy that that's what they're focused on. I, I think, I think the issue, and like, I don't, we're not experts about this. Oh, of course so not. I'm if, a fucking if, idiot. if you call us a fucking dumbass in the comments, totally warranted. I can't it. solve homelessness. What do I know? I mean, yeah, well, you haven't used your platform for good, apparently. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure that like the terms of service and TikTok, like allow them to access your mic at any time. And you don't, you don't think other apps do that? No, no, no. I know, but... How many, how many times have you talked about something and you go on Instagram and there's an ad for it? Oh, every time. Yeah. But I fucking think it and it's on my shit. <laughs> but there is, like, I, I guess the government is concerned that, like... Why is the, all this the, gay porn popping up? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, th their issue is that, like, the Chinese government could then spy on U.S. officials. Then don't, if you're a government employee, you can't download TikTok. Or your family or anybody around you? Sure. If you're that serious about it. You know, we're not spying on China? I mean, that's where they're trying to ban it. China's not spying on us already? They got balloons, baby. They got balloons? They got balloons everywhere. But, I mean, this is a good transition into conspiracy. Yeah. So, if you guys have seen the news recently, I am... I don't know much about it, so you're going to have to take the reins on this one. But Ryan Garcia, one of the best young up-and-coming boxers, boxers yeah. out there. What's going on with this kid? It's crazy. So I, I, I went to a deep dive yesterday. So again, I'm sure I have some of the details wrong. Mm -hmm. So Ryan Garcia, super, mm -hmm. he was like Instagram famous before he became a really well-known, talented boxer. But he's I thought he been became Instagram famous because of boxing. Well, be, because of like his boxing clips, like his boxing uh, clips went viral and now he's like, like competing at the highest yeah, level. Yeah. And so apparently, and this is like all has been documented, taken down, like screenshots, right? So apparently something happened to Ryan where he was invited to participate or have a meeting in a very specific location with other heads of state, What's titans called of again? industry, Bohemian Grove. Yeah, yeah. Freaks me, legitimately, you got scared I am. Yeah. Legitimately <laughs> freaks me out to even like bring like the, the location of and are people trying to say that that's not a real thing no people have it is a real thing yeah there's like known, document right? yeah, yeah it's a known thing i talked to a i went to dinner with a, for, a former government official and he confirmed that, that it's a it's, it's a, a real, oh yeah there, there's thing. there's like every president ever has like gone to this thing yeah. and apparently it is like it's basically like the illuminati like playhouse it's a meeting of the elites yeah? correct yeah. correct and I guess somebody somebody in that community thought to extend Ryan an invite. He's got a ton of clout. He's like this like rising star. He's a good looking kid. Um, and so he apparently accepted the invite. And part of the scariness of like Bohemian Grove is people don't really necessarily know like all of the customs that take place. But there's a lot of rumors that they're like sacrificing potentially humans. Yeah. Things yeah. like like they're. They're participating in rituals that are weird and sketchy as fuck. And allegedly. Alleged, correct. Yes, this yeah, is yeah. none of this yeah. is verified information. Yeah. This is all stuff that I've yeah. also seen on TikTok. Yeah. I've seen on TikTok. And oh, that's yeah. why they're trying oh, to yeah. ban it, because Ryan Garcia. That's on, yeah, yeah. Ryan Garcia is why fucking the US no longer wants to have TikTok around. <laughs> Him and Joe Rogan, apparently, yeah. all his fucking conspiracy theories. <laughs> and so he saw some shit that involved minors. He's got a he's got a kid, maybe two kids, mm -hmm. and he exploded. All over TikTok was like, I mean, I feel like he could have beat everyone up. <laughs> he's not that good. Yeah. <laughs> he's also like 140 yeah. pounds, but like 
he, he freaked out and he, I guess he took the invite, but immediately afterwards was so disturbed by what he saw that he went on this like this Twitter or X rant about like him being invited to this place and wait till he shows the videos because now he knows what's really going on and like what powerful people are doing. And he had a conversation on X with, with your boy, Andrew Tate, mm, my boy, <laughs> with your boy, your, your motive, your motivational king. <laughs> yeah. And he started talking to, talking to Andrew Tate. He was like, yo man, this is where I went. And Andrew Tate was like, yeah, I've heard of this stuff too. Kind of like, kind of like not egging him on, but like validating what he was saying and a video. So, all that stuff went out on TikTok and people were like, he's going fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. The guy's going crazy. There's some weird stuff going on. <clears throat> and like a day later, he does a live. And everyone thinks that it's AI, that it's not him. Like there are some weird features that, that screw up. Like his face kind of like droops, like very sketchy shit. But in the thing, he's like, hey guys, you know, a lot of people have been saying that I'm not doing well, I'm fine, I'm healthy, and all I'm going to talk about from now on is boxing, boxing yeah, so and, and sports and an upcoming fight because I don't want to entertain you know the stuff that was happening over the last few days. But he put out an anthology, just like so many different communications that basically said this group of people are doing awful things to other humans and kids, they basically rule the world. It's fucked up. These are like Satanists mm -hmm. and I have to let the world know. And then immediately after that was like, just kidding guys, it's all good. In this like Instagram live or TikTok live or whatever. Mm. And everyone, every, everyone's like, it's a like deep fake AI shit. And it does look a little weird. I think I, I was scrolling on TikTok yesterday and he was live. Yeah, he's good now. Oh. Yeah, he's not talking about it anymore. And you believe... I believe It's interesting that because when people go off on this stuff, everybody thinks they're crazy because there's the no... The first proof. reaction is, no, oh, guy's he's, fucking nuts. He's in a manic episode. Yes. Something's going on with his mental yes. health because it's crazy because there's no proof of this. And it's like whatever he's saying is Correct. so crazy that you it couldn't possibly be true. Correct. So you believe it? I absolutely believe that there is stuff that is so beyond our realm of comprehension. Oh, I do too, yeah. That we'll never be exposed to it. Yeah. Unless you use your platform to solve homelessness <laughs> yeah. and then you might get invited. No, but like wa watching that shit is, it's scary, dude. Mm -hmm. Like there is stuff that we will never be privy to that absolutely determines the outcome of everybody's general like livelihood. It's fucking crazy. Well, that kind of ties into like the whole... <laughs> Epstein, Pizzagate kind of stuff. I don't want to touch that. Though, I don't dude. either. They fucking skip. Can I, we even say the boat? Can we say that? Am I going to get flagged for saying that? I guarantee you get flagged for Should saying I that. Should I bleep it? But then, but then there's no other distinct. It's about a dude with an island. No, I'm not talking about Epstein. I'm talking about That's the talking about. Bohemian one. Oh, I don't Is know, Is that like bro. Uncharted? Because even Andrew Tate, I heard that audio. He was like, I don't want to talk too much about this. I know, bro. It's fucking scary as hell. Yeah. Maybe. Well, oh, here we go. <laughs> there's some probably, yeah, there's probably shit that we would never be able to comprehend. It's like the people with the aliens and they saw like a UFO. And I don't like, know if I even want to know it, dude. That Well, that's the whole point. We can't know too much because if we knew the realities, probably the stuff that goes on, the world would go crazy, man. I would lose, people would lose their shit. That's what the whole world's about. Again, I don't Control. know. What, I, like if somebody was like, Iggy, do you want to know all the secrets? I don't, th I don't know if I would say yes. Yeah. I don't know if I want to know. I, I was listening to my Andrew Tate yeah, motivational. Yeah, your, your guru. Yeah, and it yeah. was actually, it was an episode with George, the one he did, and, he, and uh, he was in it, and he was talking about, like, how money isn't real, and the, pers the, the what he talked about, essentially, I might get this wrong, is, okay, slavery back in the day, you worked for your master, and you had a place to live, and that's what you did. Money, we print money, we make money, it's not real. And what do we do? We work for our government and then we have to buy a house. So it's like, it's literally the same concept, but the thing that's not real is in the middle. So we're all slaves to the government. Well, money used to be backed by gold. Yeah. And so money did have, like paper money did used to have like a 
tangible there was a there was an asset behind it yeah but now it's not so to your point it's just it's fake no it's, it's not fake, fake but like it is it is a construct like yeah b- like the government made it up so it's all it's literally all about power and like he was he was talking a lot about like the covid stuff and like yeah. forcing people to wear yeah. ma- like that was such a crazy time where it's like okay restaurants are open but you have to wear a mask, but then you can go sit down and then eat your food. But if you get up to go to the bathroom, you have to put, put the mask back on, on yeah, yeah. come back and then you take off your mask. It, it's, it was a, a clown show, bro. Yeah, it's true. It was a literal clown and then show. And 90% of people had the mask like on their mouth, but not their nose. Yeah. And, and people are getting are all up in arms about this thing. Yeah. And it was like, look what, ha- and yeah. And all the, I don't even want to get into that kind of stuff because me you sit it, here it freaks and, me out. and you talk about like. Oh, like, oh, if you get the vaccine, you can't get the virus. That's what the Fauci guy said. And then, like, all of a sudden, he's like, well, if you get the vaccine, like, you could still get it, but it's not as bad, or you can't transmit it. And then it's like, all right, so if you get the virus, like, yeah, 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 every yeah. two weeks, it was something like, well, all right, so, yeah, you could, you'll, you'll still get it, but you should get the vaccine. Travis Kelsey got both, man. He got paid, baby. Yeah, he got, I, I'd if do we, it for If, if we're talking fake, fake stuff, give me whatever percentage fake stuff he got. To fucking promote the vaccine. Yeah. I didn't get vaccined. That vaccine. Vaccine? <laughs> vaccinated? I didn't get vaccinated. God, I wonder how much you got paid for that shit. Paid by Pfizer? I want to go... Oh, they, they're public. They should... But anyways... <laughs> okay. Off the controversial <laughs> shit. Yeah. I don't... I mean, I... Yeah, I don't care. I didn't get vaxxed. Whatever. You're. I think you're doing fine. I'm still alive. I got COVID you're, you're twice. Okay. Lost my taste and smell. I'm still breathing, so... You're doing great. Maybe that's why my girlfriend left me. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. Uh, but yeah, speaking of the fights, what do you think of this new Jake Paul, Mike Tyson? I kind of hate it, bro. Really? really? I'm just like, I'm kind of, I'm, it feels like so WWE. After the last Logan <laughs> fight, yeah. I was like, this is the dumbest shit ever. And maybe that was just Dylan Danis being a prick. That fight was horrible. But I'm like, okay, these guys have legitimate beef. They're, they might yeah. actually like fight each other. Like it might yeah. actually not be just the show mm-hmm. and it was the most bullshit sporting event i have ever paid for in my entire life and so like when i see this it's like mike tyson is such a fucking legend dude yeah. he's such a legend and i don't know what the, like it's going to be produced and apparent and i saw I that saw there are these weird terms in, in like jake can wear headgear and they're using yes. 18 ounce gloves so pillows like and isn't professional eight ounce it's 12, bro. Professional is 12 ounce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 10 or 12. Like yeah. Um, Jake doesn't have to, like, there's no weight requirement for, like, stipulation for Jake. So he can be 300 pounds if he wanted to be. He's not going to be, but he could be. Yeah. Um, he gets headgear. And the, like, the only thing, and, and Mike Tyson has to be below weight. So Mike has all the restrictions of like a re- regular fight and Jake does not. There's also no um, drug test for Jake. Interesting. So he can just juice the fuck. He can just D-ball up for this You think this he thing. juices? If he didn't, he should for this fight. For sure. Why not? Yeah. No testing. Um, the only thing, and look, of course I'm going to buy it. Of course. <laughs> no, uh, you, I don't think you have to. It's on Netflix. Co- oh, really? It's live on Netflix. Well, that's what it's a money thing. I think. Well, sure, of course. Tons of people are going to tune in because they have a Netflix account. Oh, there's a crow on the balcony. Look at that motherfucker. Is that is that good or bad luck? I don't know. Is that a luck thing? <laughs> He's gone. He's talking about Ryan Garcia. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's the government. <laughs> this is that shit, dude. This the is that shit people bird. freak out about, bro. Yeah, the spying bird. God damn it, dude. Um, tons of viewership. Obviously, tons of money. I'm watch Mike it. Tyson, Jake Paul. Um, it's who do you think wins? If there even is a winner. Of course it's Jake. You think? I, I feel like, again, I feel like it's predetermined. Like, I feel like his fights are just like, are predetermined All of fights. them? You think they're all rigged? You th- I, I don't think so. They all feel so produced to me. In, no, dude. Instinctually, you're not going to let yourself get knocked out and risk your CTE and like that Nate Robinson knockout, that Ben Ask. You think they're Nate, just... Nate, no, Nate Robinson felt real to me but like the following ones just tyrone everyone instinctually you're just gonna let yourself get punched in the fucking head and knocked out these guys so you've never been punched in the face no i've been punched in the face and like knocked down did you let him punch you in the face no but 
eh, it's like you pop back up. It's not like these these guys make a career of being punched in the head. I don't think they're. If somebody told if you, you get hit in the right if spot. someone told you, I mean, dude, how many people have died in the boxing ring? One in the history a of couple, boxing. A couple. Like if somebody said, "Hey, man, I'm gonna give you a million and a half to three million dollars. Just go take a punch." You're telling me you wouldn't eat one for a million dollars? You wouldn't just wear one? You would. You don't think instinctually you're going to try to block it? If anything's uh, coming at you, you're instinctually going to be, your reaction is going to be. These guys, these guys are fucking pros, bro. These guys are I pros. Don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that everything is like completely fake. I'm just saying it feels produced. My only hope for this fight. So he's fought guys that are relatively like stable minded people. They're <laughs> fighters. So of course they're a little fucked up, but they seem relatively fine. Mm -hmm. Mike Tyson is a psychopath. <laughs> yes. He's 60. Yeah. Yes. He's like maybe found Jesus again or whatever. Yeah. Right. Like he's reformed, but he's still a fucking psycho deep down. Mike Tyson is a crazy man. I mean, obviously if Jake's wearing headgear, he's worried. Of course he is. Yeah. So my only thing is like, there might be a moment where Tyson forgets. <laughs> like Tyson might forget that this is like a, a more of a friendly exchange and it just Wales. knock this motherfucker Do you think out. he has the stamina at yeah. 60? At 60? That's all he does, bro. It's all he does is box. All, it's all he knows for his entire life. Do you think he could knock out Jake with headgear on? I think he could kill him. <laughs> Have you seen his fucking training clips? Yeah, I just watched one of his old fights. It was, it's crazy. They're scary, bro. But that's 40 years ago. Still. I think him as a 60-year-old could, like, hurt Jake. Like, permanently damage Jake. It's why he's wearing headgear. He's fighting a 60-year-old man. Yeah. Can do steroids, can wear protective gear, has bigger gloves for protection, and is still shitting his pants. The dude's terrifying. For the bag. Rid I mean, I can't even imagine. It's got to be $10 million. Do you think this uh, takes Jake a step back from people taking him serious? Or do you think they yes. take... Yes. Yeah. For it's cool. For $10 million, Call me a fucking clown. I don't care. Yeah. Fight whoever. It's cool. But it's, it's like, cool. uh, I mean, it's not it a real cool. fight, it's essentially. Not. It's not. Who do you think, what do you think Jake needs to do to get credibility? Because he's knocked out a lot of people. I think he's got to fight, like, I think, I think someone who is nationally, internationally ranked has to give him a shot. Mm -hmm. And be like, but it's tough though, because he pretty, like, he owns MVP, right? Yeah. Like, he owns the production, he owns the fight company. Like, I don't know if there's ever going to be a straight up, I don't know if there's ever going to be a time where we can go, I am 100% confident this is straight up. I don't think there's ever going to be a fight where people can say that's the fight that makes him legit because he owns all the properties. He can mm -hmm. manipulate whatever he wants. I'm not saying, like, watching him box, I've had one shitty, like, amateur fight. He's good. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. I think he he's is great. fucking good. If I was in a ring with him, he'd probably kick my ass. Yeah. But again, every he just own he owns too many pieces of it to ever feel like I can say without with absolute certainty that that was a legit 100% real fight. He says that he one day wants to fight Canelo. Do you think that'll ever happen? Maybe when Canelo's when he's 40. 50. Yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But again, again well, who's I another just, boxer that, who who's a boxer that if he fought him and beat him, you I don't know enough him? about it. Well, you know more about UFC. Like Ryan Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk. Let's talk about the UFC because Sugar Sean. Yeah, love UFC, dude. He smoked that dude. He's he's so talented. I used to like him. My problem with Sugar Sean now is that he's like so out and about about like cheating on his baby mama yeah. and like fucking chicks and like having threesomes and like having his wife be at home. It just, it feels a little sleazy to me. Yeah. I understand like why like younger guys think he's cool. Like, Oh, he's fucking bitches and he's getting money, like whatever. But he's got like a wife or like a serious girlfriend. who has got like his kid at home. And like, yeah, he basically just like talks shit about her the entire, it sucks, bro. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, 
he's incredibly talented. The fights were sick. Shout out if for whatever reason Cheeto Vera sees this. What a fucking dog. Dude got kneed in the face. It sounded like he popped his whole jaw. Sounded like a fucking bat. Yeah. It sounded like a bat hit a baseball. It was mm-hmm. crazy. Never flinched. I will say worth, worth my money to watch that fight. I've watched Sugar Sean twice. It was this this past fight, and then the Peter Yan one. He lost the Peter Yan one. One million percent. And that to me was like a marketing thing. Like, oh, this is the next McGregor. He if brings. I'm Dana, I gotta have this guy keep winning. Yeah. Because I'll watch it. You'll watch it. What do you think led to Conor McGregor's demise? He got old, dude. Money. I mean, money, sure. But I think I saw a stat that, like, in championship fights, guys who are 35 and older are like two in a hundred. Uh, like the fight game just sucks what's the prime for fighter fighters it's got to be it's got to be like a couple year window man like mm. late 20s when your body is fully developed and these guys have been fighting since they were like 16 right or 15 yeah. some of them so like your body can only take so much damage so my guess is like 26 27 28 you know what i mean like your body's in its prime you've had and w- like those guys too like you have to have a championship fight and you don't get that until you're a little older. Like, you don't know if you're going to be good in those moments until you have, like, millions of eyes on you. Like, pay-per-view, the yeah. lights are on. So, and you only get that moment later in your career. So, I'd say, like, yeah, 26, 27, 28. I mean, Poirier just won. Time. He's pretty old, isn't he? Guy's a beast, too, bro. Yeah, he's, he's 35. He's 35. Yeah. yeah. He did really well. Uh, I love the fight. It's great. Uh, let us know your guys' thoughts down below about Jake and about the Ryan Garcia shit. Uh, I'm curious. I, to I, see. I will say, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the demo, what our demo is on the pod, but if we're talking sports for a minute, it's, it's like 18 to, I'd say it's a little, yeah, like 18 to 35. I love that there's NFL news in March. Yeah. Crazy trades happening. We're, we're AFC North guys. I'm a Ravens fan. Browns fan. You're a Browns fan. Crazy moves in the Derrick Henry to the Ravens. It makes, I, I just like elated. I couldn't be happier. Russell Wilson to the Steelers. You know what's, I just hate that. The like Steelers always figure out a way to be like competitive. Yeah. Like, I think they'll be kind of good with him. It's fucking annoying. Uh, the Steelers just got your linebacker too. What? Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen. Brutal for McQueen. Brutal for the Ravens. Browns got Jerry Judy. Jameis Winston. Weird. It's a weird trade. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the backup running back for the Bills. Who else? They're gonna be good, dude. If Deshaun Watson can learn how to play football again, I don't understand why you give a guy two hundred and sixty million dollars guaranteed. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Who hasn't played football for two years? He comes back, he gets hurt. The guy had thirty rape cases. (laughs) You can't You can't give him thirty or two hundred million dollars guaranteed. It's crazy. Yeah, and he's been pretty bad or average. He's been average. He he's not good. Bring back Flack Daddy, baby. Bring back Joseph Flacco for one more run It'll be interesting to see it. what happens. I mean, I don't know if you guys care about sports at all. But, That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know uh, if you should talk about it, but I fucking... I, Justin Fields, I he probably wants out of Chicago. For sure. He's not playing. I don't think Caleb Williams is good. I don't, I don't know either. I don't think he's a first overall pick, to be honest with you. I don't know if there's any quarterback in this draft class where I'm like, that's, that's the fucking... Oh, dude. Tony Pollard. Where'd he go again? I don't know where he went. Oh, um, Washington? Redskins, I think. Or, no, he went to the Titans, so he replaced Derrick Henry. Someone went to the Redskins, and then Josh Jacobs went to the Green Bay Packers. Correct. It's going to be a crazy year for the it's NFL. It's fucking awesome, dude. Har- Har- Harbaugh signed by the Chargers. Shout out to the boys. Yeah, our best friends own the Chargers, which is so weird it to is, say. I, I, it, it's always strange to articulate that. And people yeah. are like, what do you mean they own the Chargers? No, like their yeah, family. Like their last name like is on the fucking yeah. pays the bills. Owns yeah, yeah. the Chargers. Also, shout out Eric Kendricks, the boy. Mm-hmm. Looks like he got he was a linebacker for the Chargers. Just got picked up by the 49ers. 49ers. Which, I, which, objectively speaking, even though our boys are that team, I feel like that's a bit of an upgrade right now. So when I first different. met Phil... Uh, I met him in Mexico during COVID. We were on a trip and he was like, I was, I said something about his chargers hat or something like that. I'm like, Oh, you like the chargers? He's like, Oh yeah. My family owns them. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, okay, buddy. All right. I'm fucking LA dude over yeah. here. Saying, I'm like, what do you mean your family owns them? He's like, my family own, owns the chargers. And I was like, Oh, that's pretty fucking crazy. Tequila or what's up? Yeah. yeah. Their life is insane guys. It and really, it's we remarkable. get to reap the benefits of their life. It is true. We go to, any game we want to, and we're in the owner's suite. We got filet mignon. We got the sushi. Is sushi. the sushi is 
yeah. off the charts. Off the charts. There's a sushi chef. You got Toro. Champagne you got hanging out. Cha- Any, all these drinks. Treats. Treats. There is a table the size of my body of just sweets. Anything you want. It's unbelievable. It you get to awesome. go. When you get to the stadium, you go underneath. You don't park. We take a, a sprinter van underneath. <laughs> We walk up. We don't have to go through any of that it's, crap. It's like the player's parking lot. Yeah, yeah. No, literally. Yeah. And then uh, we go to every concert at SoFi, and we're in the owner's suite with all those. Be- we got steaks and sushi. Food. Okay, so we, we were talking. Number one, shout out to the boys. Yeah, like, they've always hooked it up. Not only have, I, have they always hooked it up, I've always said this about both of them. They have every, they have every opportunity to be dickheads. 100%. And they are the exact opposite. Yes. They're fucking awesome dudes. We love them to death. Not just because of like their name, but they're legitimately good human beings. So right. love the boys. You would typically think of like people Douchey, who are billionaires, like yeah, yeah. oh that kid's a fucking loose cannon. Yeah. He's a douchebag. He treats everybody like shit. They're really good people. Very loving. Yeah, like, I mean, even whole when, family's when, awesome. When I went through my breakup, both of them texted me. They're like, hey man, if you ever need anything, like if you ever want to talk, grab lunch, like just let me know. Like, yeah, they're good boys. Really good people. So speaking of all the fun shit we get to do, <clears throat> I'm finding it difficult. Maybe you are too. Because we're so like, because we're so lucky and get to do all these cool things, mm-hmm. we're meeting girls in those environments. Yeah. Who also like I t- we we take it for granted sometimes that we get a chance to do all this shit. Where like where do you even look? Like, uh, social media is a trap. Mm-hmm. Dating apps, uh, I think, are just I've never enjoyed my experience in dating apps. Yeah. We're meeting these girls are who are like used to being put on a fucking private jet and going in the owner suite and like yeah. having all this cool access, where are we looking? Where are we looking? Where do we go? I mean, I'm not looking right now. But I'm saying, wait, like where, where in the world? Not LA. And that's that's the answer? It's just a different state entirely? I think, I don't know, man. When you first moved to LA, and obviously we appreciate all of that stuff. Very grateful. Very grateful for it. When you first moved to LA and you get into that life, that's all you care about. It's true. And you can, and I always tell people when they move here, don't get sucked in. Yeah, but it's impossible. I mean, and when, everybody does. Everybody does. Yeah, when I was, you know, 22 years old and had millions of followers and I was getting invited to all, I'm going, hanging out with all these celebrities, like they're next to me at the club. It's cool. You're like, oh, this is fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. Going on these trips and stuff like that. But now that I've been here for 10 years, like, I'm like, I've turned stuff like that down. They're like, hey, you want to come to Miami for New Year's? I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I'm like, sorry. but to, to your question, it's like if a girl's been here maybe for 10 years and she's not just here, yeah, that's a good then point. it's okay yeah. to meet them in that environment. But if because they, it's no longer the most important thing in their life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But if they just get here and they're getting access to all that stuff, then it's, it's too, it's too much for them. It's, it's such an overload. And if you're not giving them those experiences, then why the fuck would I date you, bro? Speaking of, are you doing Coachella this year? Maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't think I. I don't. I think. I think. I, I think I might have aged. I think I'm finally aging out. Yeah, I, I've. I haven't gone to the past couple. But, Neither have I. Yeah. But I've had interest in the past couple. Yeah. This one, I'm like, I flat out don't want to go. Well, I've been, dude, when I like I said when I first moved out here, I went to. Yeah. Every I went to both weekends. I went oh, to oh that week, see that's gross. Every year that's never and been a stagecoach. That's also I gross. went three, three weekends, weekends in, in a row. row. Oh, your poor body, dude. I know. Should have died. I know. You should have got a pair of car. You should have got a pair of carditis. With yeah, like me. I had the best time, but th- that's crazy. I've done it ten yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. So I think I'm out, bro. You think you're out. Yeah, I think I'm out. I don't have a ton of things that are like coming up like that that are super exciting to me right now. Yeah. Well, we talked about. Me and Iggy are very di- different in the dating world. I'm very, you like lavish things. You take girls I to like, catch steak. But I talked about this with Iggy because this is, I wear the like, most basic shit, right? And you, I told you, you lead with, you know, true. You, you wear I, your I like Louis my Vuitton. Labels. Sure, and, sure, sure. But you're not today, which I appreciate. Yeah, these are just, these are just jeans and a tee. I'm like... Why are you so into like designer shit? And do you wear it because you're trying to impress a girl or do you wear it because you genuinely like it? I, th- I, I do genuinely like it. I never had it growing up. Mm. I never had access to it growing up. Okay. I could never, I couldn't dream of going to my dad who was a mechanic 
for 50 years and my yeah. mom who taught special ed kids and be like, I need a thousand dollars for a fucking t-shirt. Yeah. They would have, and I not hyperbolic. My mom would have smacked the shit out of me. Be like, what are you talking about? I've never had access to it and I've always wanted to have access to it. So do I like it for sure? Yeah. It's also like a thing for me, like, look, mom, I made it. Okay. Like I can, I can, do like I can have some of these things that my peers always had growing up and I never had. I went to a really small, very white private high school in Pasadena. Mm. I was the only brown kid in my class. I mean, like we had a class of 86 kids. It was all white and Asian kids. Like all of my friends' parents are doctors and lawyers and they're in like they're politicians and like yeah. they're really substantially wealthy people and I am, I grew up very lower middle class, like yeah. 150,000 a year in LA. <laughs> fuck. My, that'd be a dream for my parents <laughs> yeah. back in the day. But like, I've never had it. And so it was something that I wanted to get for me mm -hmm. in LA. It kind of feels like I'm keeping up with the Joneses a little bit. Like you sort of have, like have to have it as well to be like competitive in this like professional and social environment. Like yeah. if you show up with a nice watch, to a board meeting, there is a different look. I mean, like just yeah, like whether yeah. you like it or not, that's perception the re that's, is reality. Yeah, that yeah. is the reality of the situation. So yeah. the answer is I like it for me because I worked hard to get it, mm. but I, it would be a lie if I didn't say when I put it on, like I knew that other people noticed it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I tried to get into it. Um, I had a deal with like the goat app and they like gave me credits. That's a good deal. And I could buy, you know, I bought a bunch of designer shoes. That's cool. House got robbed and they stole all of them, so I don't have them. But yeah, I, I have like three Saint Laurent hoodies and a Givenchy hoodie. Nice, you said it correctly. Nice. And uh, you ever see me wear them? I don't think I've ever wear you. See, I don't think I've ever seen you wear anything with a brand on it. No, I don't know. I I tried. I mean, it doesn't like, but, but everybody doesn't likes anything. their own shit. It doesn't mean yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But if you, if it makes you feel good, I liked, I like my car. I spent a fat bag on my Range Rover. I like my apartment. I like my TV. I like cameras. Like totally. this shit. Right, 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 right. This, this is not a cheap setup, by yeah, the way. It's ridiculous. This yeah. shit is my designer shit. Yeah, that's right. So everybody has their own interests. So I'll answer your question more directly. I wear my designer shit at home. Yeah, by yeah. myself yeah, yeah. while I'm watching TV with my True. dog. So like, True. it's not just to wear it. I just yeah. like wearing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always going to be the white Vans guy. And it's uh, a good look, man. Look, if I had a couple more inches, I also maybe wouldn't wear shoes. That's actually why a slightly I, larger heel. That's why I do yeah. wear white Vans because it shortens you. It doesn't shorten me. It, it's my true height, right. but they're so, they look like socks. And when I put bulky ass shoes on and you I look have, weird, I have a size think? 12 oh, and I yeah, have skinny yeah, yeah, ass yeah, legs. Yeah, 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 my yeah. feet look like clown yeah, feet. Yeah. So that's why I rock the white vans. Oh, I got, I got a fat body so I can wear big shoes to match yeah. them. Well, you're not fat, bro. Oh, you're thanks, built. Man. I've been working on it, man. You're built. I've been working hard on it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm really loving these, bro. I, Dude, I'm so excited to keep posting these with you. We're going to keep rocking. Keep rocking. We're about to go to a life improvement class right now. Another one? Yeah. Okay. We're working on ourselves. We're trying to become better and uh, drop some comments. Anything you guys want us to talk about in the next episode or any opinions you have with the stuff that we did talk about, we'd love to see your feedback. Sorry we didn't get to the comments on the last video uh, this time. Kind of ran out of time. Uh, but do drop some comments and we'll read them in the next episode of anything you're going through. And as I said, drop a like, hit that subscribe and suck a dick.